We are pretty much game live here, so let me put some volume on the uh, in-game real quick. And here we go, pistol run between Na'Vi and Enfacti underway. Did manage to find the uh, the Go TV just in time. Well, it seems like it is going to be on a rack raggy relay, which is always a pain in the ass. One, two kills going either way. It looks like Enfacti are going to get the bomb down here on the, uh, the covered site. Spitfire with the frag onto Kib again. Zeus digging in on what used to be Moto Pit. Sees moving forward as well. So Na'Vi on the retake here. Headshot coming in from Zeus. That's going to be Spitfire taking down Pronax with a kill onto Seized. That's going to force Zeus back to reload a little bit here. He's got that USP, so if he's already reloaded one clip, he can't afford to waste any more bullets, and he's going to be taken down by Glaive. That concludes the pistol round, and it does go the way of the Swedes. So, in fact, off to the best possible start here. Let's give you the quick roster rundown for anyone just tuning in, of course. Going to start off with uh, Na'Vi, who are going to be Starrick, C9, Zeus, Kibaken, and Seized. Moving over to end faculty now, of course, the Swedish squad. We're going to have Pronax, Glaive, Spitfire, Carrigan, and RDL. That concludes your roster rundown. Second uh, second round of the game about to start here will be Nico Bash, of course, against Na'Vi. So you would hazard a guess that this is going to be a relatively quick round here. Let's have a look at the overview, see what we got set up. So it seems like uh, somewhat of an antique. Yeah, there we go. That's more like a traditional antique. They're going to spread back out again. Seems like there's maybe thinking about going second mid there for a second, but we're going to wait for the uh, initial pick here. As you can see, C's pushed all the way up on Banana, so he's going to be vulnerable to Glaive. Glaive checks, which he's not going to check close enough. Big mistake from Glaive. He's going to be eventually leveled up by Pronax. That Galil is in a place where it can be moved, though, so not as big, not as big a deal as it could have been. Let's just say that. If Glaive would have died a little bit further up Banana, then uh, that Galil could have been possibly retrieved by... Uh, who have we got on Banana? Uh, C9 would have been closest. So, Kibikem and company still on covered site. No rotation as of yet. Looks like they're going to go for the boost here, so... Setting up for the old Cadre boost. Kibikem going to get up there, which means we should see a rotation from B. As you can see, it's going to be Banana that seems to be the uh, site of choice right now for M Faculty. They've got 26 seconds to make a move, so... There we go, it's going to be an arch split at the same time as well. Here we go, here's the move. Pronax with two kills with the Galil. C9 taken down. And that's going to be the bomb down as well. So, HE going off towards... Uh, that was Kibiken, who does manage to make it into ruins here. He's picked himself up an Uzi as well. Let's see what we can do with the Mac 10. Well, results back to the P250. It's better at range. Looks like he might be thinking about saving this Uzi here. In fact, he's setting up for exit kills. It's pretty obvious what he's doing here. He's going to look for Pronax. He's managed to tag up Pronax a little bit. He's going to chase and try to remove that weapon. Shut down, though. Pronax with a hat trick kill. And the bomb will explode for good measure as well. Pronax, did he get away? Yep, indeed he did. So, Pronax saving his Galil, securing three kills. And that's going to make it a 2 0 scoreline. So, if you bear with me two seconds, I need to check something on my streams. Make sure I put the uh, right title up. I didn't. I need to change it. So, bear with me two seconds, folks. V versus N Faculty. And game live at 20.00. Okay, there we go. So, I'll tap back in now. Do apologize about that. And if you're with Banana as well, top Banana. AK spray, no tags though, really. See, he's taking a little bit of damage. 28 HP removed from him right now. As you can see, it looks like we have seen a couple of CT flash flashbangs being thrown out. Kibikin still has a HE as well. It's not a uh, fully eco Seize with the opening frag as well. He drops Pronax. He's not going to know that that, uh, that AK was capturable though for a second. As you can see, now Glaive and Carrigan into position to stop any pickup of that weapon. So, play slowing down yet again. And faculty don't want to force the issue here. There's no reason for them to do so, really. I mean, why would you uh, Why would you put yourself in a situation where you could potentially lose a round that, you know, you should nine times out of ten win? So, C9 being dropped by Spitfire already. I wish people wouldn't use fake tags. It makes casting so much harder. For those wondering who uh, Vil Shuk S is, that's going to be, of course, Starix. So here we go, Kibiken from Archside, picks up one kill with a P250, shut down by RDL eventually. 
And I see Starks also grab a frag with his uh, pistol as well. I think that was a P2000. So, bomb being planted on covered site. Two on two. Bomb advantage in favour of M faculty, but good cash damage being done. And Starks and uh, Zeus do have assault rifles here to play with, so chances of a retake looking pretty good. So as long as Starks lands the uh, the first kill here. RDL doing a good job of playing it by here. He knows he's got Spitfire and Library to cover as well. Now Spitfire will find some damage. I'm lucky that wasn't a headshot though, it looked like it for a second. So the defusal not going to happen. Spitfire going to get that kill and check the bomb. He's going to fall back now for a library, and that will explode. So, despite securing a couple of weapons and doing some decent cash damage, Navi do concede that round. That's going to be a free zero scoreline now. This, my friends, is where it will get interesting. No, we should see. Yep, full buy up from Navi. One AWP, two M4A4s, one M4A1, and the AK-47 that Zeus managed to save from the last round. What is interesting though is that Carrigan's gone for the AWP here as well. So. Potential for an AWP duel on mid. Well, it seems... Yeah, it seems like we've actually gone for our 3-2 uh, split here with one going over towards Banana, which is going to lead to the kill. Starrick taking down Spitfire early. Carrigan electing to, uh, to face mid rather than face that AWP. H E going up towards top mid. Flashbang to follow it up as well. And this is going to be the push through onto uh, Archside, you would think. Yep, RDL leading the way. Does do damage to Seize, brings him low, I'm not sure how low, 13 HP onto, uh, in fact, sorry, it wasn't Seized, it was Starrix who was brought low by that. Must have rotated over from Banana exceptionally quickly after that first pick. So, Navi pulling something a little bit untowards though, sending Starrix over towards Banana first for the pick and then back towards uh, Archside. If they do that too many times in a row, they might get caught. Anyway, RDL shut down by the AK-47 and Zeus who managed to make it back around towards uh, Archside cover. C9 falling back on quad. Can't get the kill. Pronax secures that with the AK-47. So, only a one-man advantage. Well, two-man advantage. <laughs> Starrix with his second arc kill. The round takes down Glaive. Kibikum waiting in pit. Finds the frag onto Carrigan. That's a huge kill. And a second one as well onto Pronax to secure the round. And that is the first gun round over to Na'Vi. So, 3-1 now the scoreline. Na'Vi with the momentum. We should see M Faculty on the bye here, I think. I'm assuming we will because he did have uh, plants early. Then again, they might want to wait for uh, Carrigan's AWP again. Let's look at Carrigan's cash. Yeah, they're going to wait for that AWP. So just a couple of flashbangs being bought by RDL. Looks like it's probably going to be a banana rush here, I would think. Seized and Zeus were perfectly positioned to deal with this. They're going to force it back. As you can see, they didn't even get it to a point where they could push. C9 also picking up that position where uh, we did see free stacked up towards B. C9 with the opening kill. TK coming in from Spitfire, seized and seized again. M4A1 headshots onto Carrigan and Spitfire, and that just leaves RDL to find here. Well, that's going to be an easy kill for Starrix, and that is now 3 2. No surprises that we had a flawless eco there from uh, Navi. That is Vincia, one of those teams that if you go up against them under strength, they're going to punish you for it. Very rare that they give away an eco. Even when they were at the worst in CSGO, which you have to say was, you know, compared to where they could have been. Uh, they've, they've sort of righted the ship as of late with the roster changes and such, but uh, compared to where they were in 1.6, you know, it was, it was pretty shocking to be honest. But even then, they didn't give away easy goals. So, Zeus pushing all the way down. There's going to be another eco here from the Swedes, so it does look like they are putting a lot of stock into that AWP on Carrigan. So it's going to be the bash, so only the one kill that round for... Uh, the guys over from M Faculty. Did, did go the way of RDL. Carrigan already buying the AWP, so it does seem like the strategy is going to uh, centre around Carrigan getting the first pick here. Which, to be honest, isn't a bad strat. Carrigan is a good AWPer, it's just can he get past the AWP of uh, Starrix? That's the question. And Starrix will figure out what Carrigan's game plan is, and then he'll start to anti strat against that, so. Uh, smokes out onto mid. Got a tag from Carrigan, that's going to take Starrix down. So, one man advantage. Nobody going to face Carrigan from this point forward from Navi, you would think. Pronax has been brought low as well as Spitfire. Just 30 health between the two of them at this point. I'll speak of the devil, let's see what Spitfire can do here. Looks like he's going to be smoking over, so an incendiary being prepped as well. This is going to hold them back. 
Having two members that low in health, it means you can't really charge over the fire like that. At least still they baited out an incendiary for a smoke, so I'm not a particularly bad trade. Frag from seized and C9 onto Spitfire. Kibikin with the headshot onto Carrigan as well. Clave eventually taking down Kibikin, but that's going to allow Navi a little bit of time here to get the rotation. As you can see, Zeus already to arch. He could stop the plant here theoretically. Clave only just making it on site. Zeus going to open up. He does get it. The angle, but not the tags. HG kill from C9, though. Glaive with the assist on that. Oh, C9 trying to get through quad side. RDL shuts him down with the AK-47. Seized with the... Uh, the sorry, RDL with the kill just before that to C9, I should say. And seized for the final frag with the USP. So that defusal will come in, and that will give Navi the lead for free here. So despite a fairly uh, shaky pistol... And I find ourselves in the dominant position with momentum filming on their side, as you can see. Not many deaths either, so we got 13... Well, he did have 13-4 on C's before he started buying. He's currently in first place, 9-1-3. and three. Second place can be Pronax, 6-0-5. And, and third place on go to Zeus for... Uh, in fact, no, to uh, Starix, 6-0-4. You'd have to say it would be second. I've got to start paying more attention to the way CS goal scores. There's no rhyme or reason behind that whatsoever. And I know when you're on the Go TV, it doesn't show you MVPs, but... Even with MVPs, it still doesn't make sense. I mean, MVP, it gives you MVP if you defuse the bomb, for fuck's sake. So, a ton of AK spam from the uh, Swedes here. Nothing that's been noteworthy so far. Uh, Karen going to wait for his pick again. He's going to be looking for Starrix, who has bought the AWP again, so... Where is Starrick? Starrick's going to be watching from Arch side, so he's not nearly as aggressive as he was in the uh, previous round. Uh, Spitfire going to prep the other end of Aps, but as you can see, it looks like CC's going to be on the balcony here. Those flashbangs going to be completely ineffectual in Aps. Uh, Carrigan peeking out, takes down Starrick again, second kill in a row. Op and op engagement, nicely done. So a one man advantage here for M Faculty. So he's going to pull back into sight. C9 just chilling in library. He is going to catch one here. That's going to be... Was that Carrigan? No, it was Glaive. There was a kill into Pronax too. So Navi holding fast. Four and three now. Kibikin coming up from behind. He's going to get this rotation in. He's going to go for the backstab any second here. Carrigan moving in. RDL with the AK-47 to C. C9 with the double low. Carrigan and RDL both being shut down. That will secure the fifth round for Navi. 5-3 now the scoreline. And I have to say, Navi looking pretty good here. That's five runs on the bounce. In fact, they need to answer. This won't be the round that they will be answering. Only two flashbangs to play with here. Five P250s. So, they're obviously looking for a bomb plant with those two, in fact, three flashbangs now. RDL's bought one as well. Could get them entry onto Banana. Probably not covered site, though. Spitfire charging up mid. He's going to catch Starrix out of position. Secures the AWP. That's going to be passed off to Carrigan, you would think. There we go, there's the pass. RDL cut off by the fire. C9 securing the frag. Glaive with the head, uh, the uh, P250 kill onto Zeus as well. Kibikin looking to find the frag from Statue. Can't really connect onto Glaive though. Glaive getting the kill eventually onto C9 as well. So this is looking like a really good eco right now for the Swedes. Kibikin with two kills. One with the USP onto the uh, head of Carrigan. Glaive eventually taking down. So it's a two on one here. C's shut down from Pit. Spitfire with that frag. And that is going to be an exceptional round from the Swedes. So they, not only do they uh, capture weaponry out of that, they also get a victory as well. 5-4 now. Let's take a look at how that leaves the scoreboard. Still first place C's, 10-3-5. and five. Second place going to be uh, Kibikin, 8-0-5. And third place C9, 7-2-6. But RDL is starting to climb the board, as is Pronax, 6-1-7 and seven on Pronax right now. Uh, Starx again on the AWP. Not had much luck with it so far. Uh, he's waiting for the peak on second mid. He's not going to find it just yet. RDL probably going to go apps here from the uh, looks of it. Let's have a look. Yep, indeed he is. 
And double HE somewhat ineffectual. M4A1 sprayed down onto Banana. That almost finds the head of Glaive. Carrigan waiting oh so patiently for that smoke to dissipate. As soon as it does, he will be looking to get the pick. Starks has pulled way back here. He's still waiting patiently. 56 seconds on the clock, so in fact, they have quite a bit of time here to uh, commit to a move. Carrigan peeking out. Takes St <laughs> Starix for the third round in a row. He can't be happy about this, Starix, so far. Killer's level back up, but every time that AWP goes down, it's a huge psychological advantage to, uh, to Carrigan. Uh, it's going to be a frag from Zeus as well. Go TV. Paused, but it was always going to be Zeus's frag. This one's going to be seized as well. Can he get the double? He can. In fact, he does. Takes down uh, Spitfire. Thanks for that lag goal TV. Pronax eventually getting a retaliatory kill, but damage has been done here. He's now the last man standing. Three on one. We'll get the bomb down, though. He's pushed for a sneaky angle here as well. Zeus won't realize this. Oh, if only he hadn't fired, he could have actually been ninja then. Two more kills to find. This will be the defusal attempt. It will pull him off, though. That AK will uh, terrify C9 a little bit. He's back on it, though, and he will get this defusal here. Oh, he's been pulled off it again. Pronax just managed to secure the kill on Kibikin just in time. Doesn't get the clutch, though. I think he might get the bomb here, though. Yep, no time there for C9. So good play in the end from Pronax. Plays that bomb like a fiddle. And that makes it a, uh, well, a game that is a lot more interesting because of that explosion. Do we have a pause here? No, okay, there we go. So I'll take a look at the scoreboard. C's still in first. Pronax now in second, though. He's 918, only member of M Faculty with positive KDR. And second place, that honor would belong to C9, 8, 2, and 6. So, tight game, five apiece. Two rounds on the bounce now for M Faculty after the five in a row from uh, Navi. Seems like it is going to be one of those games that swings back and forth on a pendulum. Flashbang is going off. No casualties as of yet in this round. 1 minute 18 on the clock. Let's see what we've got going on. Again, in fact, they're looking for the spread and pick strat. I think a lot of this has boiled down to Carrigan's art play. The fact that he's been able to uh, neutralize Starix has been a big factor here for M Faculty. That's represented in Starix's KDR 6 0 and 7. Considering he had five runs on the, uh, the bounce, you'd expect a better scoreline of, than 6 0 7. So, Zeus waiting for this push from RDL. He's going to be forced into lower apps. Meanwhile, it's going to be over towards Banana where the real action is going down here. Cheeky little flashbang from Seize. That might allow him to get a couple of bullets here with the M4A1. Finds the head of Pronax. Eventually taken down by Spitfire. C9 with the M4A4. Takes down uh, Spitfire in retaliation, but... Kind of skews the frag. C9 still back right sight, though. He will play a big part in this round. They are moving in. Zeus and Zeus again. M4A1 double headshots. Two kills that round for Zeus. Two kills for C9. And that secures the banana sight. So, Navi take the momentum back. And, yeah, Grack, I did see that throw against Houston Alexander. Um, but Houston Alexander is not a wrestler, is he? <laughs> YouTube are probably like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's Twitch chat. Yeah. Somebody being cute. I can't believe that comment on Cadred still gets brought up. <laughs> so, double HE down banana. No tags from it, though. Waste of $600 from uh, M Faculty. So, uh, sorry, from Navi, I should say. Uh, it does seem like it's going to be pressure over towards A here, so let's, uh, let's take a look at what Kibikin can see from his spot. Not a great deal at the moment. Seems like in fact they've slowed it down again. They are eco here, so they need to brute force their way into cover if they're going to do it. They need to do it relatively quickly because Seized will figure this out. He'll push Banana eventually. He's not exactly the most patient player in the world. 
Uh, they seem to be going arch side now, so this could be a B split after all. Oh, Starrix not on form right now. Takes a P250 headshot, drops him down to 27, didn't connect with his AWP. They are going to focus on Starrix now. Starrix and Zeus picking up kills. Starrix going to be shipped down eventually by Carrigan. Keep a Ken from Pit with the M4A4 headshot to Glaive. Carrigan replying though. C9 and Zeus for two final frags. And that brings it back to a two, two run game here in favour of Navi. Picking out the scoreboard. C still in first. 13, 3, and 7. So nearly a 2 to 1 KDR for him. Uh, Zeus above a 2 to 1 KDR. He's at uh, 11, 3, and 5. And third place, that's going to be C9, 11, 2, and 6. Thanks for double HE though, but they're going to think twice about it. Starrix facing with that arc, finds the headshot of Spitfire, but not going to get the second kill into Pronax. And really, Starrix needs to be securing more than one kill with that weapon. If you're going to put $4,750 on his back, you're expecting to use it. Here we go, Pronax moving into sight, finds the frag onto C9. Second kill this round for Pronax. Is he going to keep seized out of play for a second or two? Carrigan going to the plant onto Barbecue Pit. Fire non-effectual. Flashbang going to be though. Uh, Kibiken going to start to push forward. Zeus drop low. It's the AK kill coming in from Carrigan. That leaves just Zeus and Seize to find. Speaking of Seized, M4A1 kill onto Pronax. Brings it back to a 3 on 2, but I think he's thinking about saving here. He knows he doesn't have time. Zeus also shut down. There's the kill onto Carrigan. Can he get out of sight now? Glaives is going to wait here. And Glaives secures the frag for good measure as well. He might even escape with his AK here. Yep, he will do. I'm saying he will do. I'd <laughs> Go TV again. Seriously, yes, yeah, see, sort your shit out. So, 7-6 the scoreline. And faculty with another good round here. I think a 9-6 six, uh, six for Navi would be... Uh, well, considering he lost pistols, but would be a pretty damn good half, actually. So, 14th round of the first half. Of course, one more game to come this evening as well. We do have Universal Soldiers versus Astana Dragons starting at 9. Kibiken starting the round off in favour of Na'Vi. 5 on 4 now. They're going to look to uh, maintain this advantage. Not going to happen though. Spitfire with the retaliatory frag onto Zeus. Glaive starting to push up mid. He's going to be facing Kibiken any second here. Does manage to skew that kill onto Starrix. Kibiken with the re uh, reply though. 7 6 2 round to the back of Glaive's head. And that makes it a 3 on 2 in favour of Navi. Now Spitfire is going to take a lot of damage from this HE here. Drop to 30. C9 perfectly positioned to deal with uh, Pronax as it comes up. Spitfire does get the exit kill to Kibiken, but C9 holding down mid, takes down Pronax, captures himself an AK, and that is now bombed down, so... Spitfire has to retrieve the bomb here. Good flashbang. I was going to say, Seize is going to face, and Seize will secure the frag. 8-6 now the score. Time to take a peek at that scoreboard again. 16, 3, and 8. C still in first place. Second place is going to be C9, 12, 2, and 7. And third place, that goes to Zeus, 11, 3, and 7. As you can see, nobody from M Faculty with a uh, even a neutral KDR at this point. So that little bit of uh, hope that they might have given us has sort of dissipated over the past four or five rounds. Navi now back in the driver's seat. Still, second half to come though. There's the art pick from Starrix. Can he find the second? He won't. Carrigan shuts him down with the P250. That means now Carrigan has an art to work with. Can he get away with it? Well, he does. Gets the P250 kill as well. Didn't lose that much health in the process either. Only down to 81, so... Healthy Carrigan will be looking for this pick onto uh, C9. C9 going to get the smoke out though. going to stop Pronax from guessing exactly where he was. One man advantage for the Swedes. They need to press this into a plant. It looks like they are going to do that with the push through quad and apps. Kibiken, as you can see, being pretty ninja on site here. 
Can he stop the plant? Indeed he does. Actually shut down by Carrigan Zarp, who's been on fire all game with that AWP. That leaves just Cease to find, who's making his way through quad side. Finds the kill to Carrigan. He's going to stop the plant in place. Spitfire now in a one-on-one. -on -one. Both of 100 HP. Both have weapons that can absolutely dominate. M4A1 versus AK-47. Now, there we go. Molotov going off. That actually might work against Seized here. Stopped him from just straight rushing up onto the site now. Oh, Spitfire! What was that about? You should have realized that he got past there. And that will be the defusal. So, 9-6 half for Navi. I think Spitfire looked to looked gift horse in the mouth there. He had the uh, the angle for the kill. All he had to do was, was figure out that he'd gone left. So, second half going to start momentarily. The scoreboard has been wiped, so I'd still be seized to finish first from the half. Would be nice if uh, Hidden Path would implement a secondary scoreboard. You know, one for half, one for overall. That would be kind of cool. Well, you could track who's done what for the course of a game. There's no reason they can't do that. If you have the, the sort of functionality in Delta, you would expect that sort of functionality to be uh, accessible in CS as well. So, let's see if my uh, 9 o'clock game is still scheduled for 9. It certainly is good stuff. So right after this, uh, we should have the game between Universal Soldiers and Astana Dragons. Might be a little bit late getting into that one, though, because of the uh, the late start here in the Navi and Faculty game. It was a late start as well. It was more like uh, 25 minutes behind where it should have been. It looks like we have a bit of a wait here for the second half as well. Oh, it's fun. So, Spitfire not, not wanting to uh, cool off. He's trying to keep one practicing his M4A1 skills. I think as well at 9, I might have uh, Warclan coming on. So, let me see if he's uh, actually messaged me yet. Where are we? 9. No message from uh, Simon just yet. Let's see if I can get in touch with him. Well, he is online. So, he should be joining me for the 9 o'clock cast, I believe. Hopefully we can get the second half started momentarily and we can get the 9 o'clock cast started somewhere close to that. Oh, doesn't look like we're going to be starting just yet. There we go, Navi now ready. So we should have the uh, restart coming in. And this will be pistols for your second half. 9-6 to Navi, of course, coming into the uh, second half. So as long as they pick up pistols here, they're going to be sitting fairly pretty. Especially against the CT uh, and faculty. Don't be surprised to see Navi hit second mid here. It's one of their favourite pistol strats. As you can see, yep, Glock Armour Balcony. That's what I'm thinking here from Navi. Let's have a butchers and see where they're going. God damn, go TV, seriously. Yeah, it is looking like it is going to be uh, Glock Armour Balcony here. So Carrigan's going to be the go-to guy to stop this. Looks like we are going to see Season Star X just holding mid. In fact, nope, they're going to peel here. It seems like they've, uh, they've had an inkling of something happening on mid, so they're going to fake second mid, pull back down to banana, potentially. We've left C9 over towards apps, though, so it seems like he's going to be causing a bit of a distraction. And now they're going back apps, so maybe even Navi don't know what they're doing here. Pushing up through mid, Glaive with the first kill into Seized. So he's showing a lot of guts. He's like, well, I don't think Glaive's going to be facing. I think he'll be reloading, so I'm just going to... Face quad side first. A little bit baity, to be honest. I can't imagine C's will be too happy about being baited that hard, but whatever. So, Navi not having much luck up mid. They're now going to switch it up and go banana again. 37 seconds, so they can't keep pulling fakes like this indefinitely. So, all four members here, top banana now. Zeus pushing in. Does look for Spitfire, can't find it. We've got a tree boost here, and Zeus has missed it as well. How did he make it into ruins then? Spitfire and Pronax get the kill. Pronax with that USP as well. He's still up in the tree. They still haven't realised he's up there yet. Now, have you not shown much game sense at this point? Carrigan on the quick rotation too. Bomb ticking though. And he's got the angle for the kill. Oh, Kibiken sports with the uh, the Glock. 
Are they all going to force the defusal here? And that's the kill from Pronax to secure the defusal. So, in fact, they win the second pistol round. And that will bring them to a 9-7 scoreline. So, in fact, they're right back in this game with a shout here. This Universal Soldiers are starting again. We might not get to cover half of this at this rate. Depends how quickly they start, though. be one of the few times that I am hoping for a delay on the game. Also, at the same time, it will be Very Games versus Navi. That will be covered by Nip TV. So, uh, what I would suggest is you get the old double box open, you get the two streams going at the same time, and you have yourself a uh, awesome evening of Counter Strike Go. So, Pronax pep prepping for uh, Banana. Nothing's going to come in Banana, though, as you can see. It's going to be P250s up mid. They're getting a good tag. Finishes it off with the, uh, the M4A4. Karen spraying away with that M4A1 as well. Second kill from Glaive. In fact, it was going to be RDL. And Glaive locking it down. So, how many, how many kills was that for Glaive that round? That was four kills. So, not too bad at all. 9-8 the score. And that eco bash signals the uh, final bash. So, we should see weapons here. C9 actually still on a pistol. That's kind of intriguing. There we go. Okay, I was going to say, I didn't see any TKs or anything like that, so there's no reason for C9 to be rocking a pistol. Starrix, he's going to be looking for this frag onto Carrigan. Carrigan has been the bane of Starrix's existence throughout this game, so... Any frags he can get against Carrigan are going to uh, are going to be oh so sweet. Anyway, Pronax and Seized exchanging kills. Spitfire with that headshot with the FAMAS onto Seized as well. One man advantage for the Swedes here in the first gun round of the second half. M4A4 spray coming out from Glaive. He's forced back up towards the top of the arm. Does manage to make him top of the car. Which obviously considering the smoke out means he's not invulnerable, but means that Starix would have to be uh, a genius to guess. Clairvoyant actually, not genius, because yeah, you can't really be a genius when it comes to guessing. So C9 making good headway up through mid. I'm on disadvantage for Navi though, so it's going to get to C9 here to uh, to get the pick. Has he got anybody to face? Nope, they're going to be both over towards Pit, so Carrigan and RDL dug in real deep now on the covered site. Kibikin seems to have realised that, and he's like, you know what, Banana seems easier. Let's go Banana instead. Which, to be honest, considering that Glaive and uh, Spitfire are both low, probably the right call from Navi. C9 has made it front of Ruins here, so... Ooh, Spitfire with the FAMAS kill. Eventually shut down by Starrix. Back of sight lights up, though, from Glaive. Grabs the frag and the double, in fact. He takes down uh, Starrix for the final kill. That's the second gun round here for uh, M Faculty. Nine each down. You would think this is going to be another eco here from the uh, tease of Navi. Indeed it will be. So, a good opportunity here for uh, M Faculty to take the lead again. Haven't really held the lead since the uh, pistols of the first half, so. Being on that CT side now does give them a little bit of an advantage. They do seem to be very comfortable on the CT side on Inferno. Out of low wraps. Here we go. Kibikin can open up with that P250. Gets the frag onto Glaive. He's going to pull back in now as well. So, initial kill goes the way of Natas Vincia. And faculty do level that back up with RDL from Pit. And a second kill from Carrigan onto Seized. And another frag from RDL with the assist from Pronax. And a third frag from RDL. Shuts down Kibikin. Spitfire going to get the final kill onto Zeus. And that is the uh, end of the round. So... Indeed, and the faculty do take the lead. 10 9 9 the scoreline. Just bear me two seconds. I'm going to tab out which one I uh, deal with. Warclone is apparently playing a longer than expected ranked game of LOL. What a loser, kid. Uh, okay, so I'm just explaining what's going on with the, uh, the game we're currently in, and that probably 9 o'clock start is going to be uh, not happening. So. Here we go, one of those pivotal gun runs that could very well dictate the course of this game. The 
can see that neither team here wants to make a mistake. That's why we're here in the AK spam. And lucky tags like that will set up a good round. Uh, C's prepping with the flash over towards quad. That's going to be smoke, sorry, I should say. Kind of pointless for him to flash that high. It would detonate mid of course. Uh, IDL, if we would just wait for that grenade, that could have been a lot more effective than it was. Carrigan looking for the frag on the uh, balcony exit. He's going to be smoked out, though. RDL on site with the M4A1. Gets the kill on the entry. Kibber can shut down. Pronax digging in as well. Seize with the AK-47. Zeus with a frag as well. Pronax and Glaive with M4 and M4A1 headshots, though. Gold TV making this almost pointless to cast. Thanks very much. C9, your last one standing now. Three on one. And he was basically backed in a corner, though, on pit. There wasn't much he could do. Bomb down on site, and that's going to be the frag. So 11-9 now, the score line. And that's all the gun rounds of the second half so far going the way of the Swedes. Take a look at the scoreboard from the second half so far. Glaive in first place, 10-2-1. Second place, Pronax, 5-3-1. In fact, second place, RDL, 5-0-1. And third place, Pro uh, Pronax, 5-3-1. In fact, I was right the first time, though. It is it's Pronax first and uh, RDL in 13. Mm, here we go. Smoke onto Banana. It's going to try and dislodge Pronax. I guess Pronax is there, is it? Yep, indeed it is. Everybody has that spot down pat now. I think the uh, the changes that were made to Banana that you know, like in CSS anyway, where you had the uh, the generator, made Banana a little bit more approachable. But now when you factor in the uh, penetratable walls, I think it's back to where it ever was. So back to being a uh, city map. There's the pick onto Kibiken. First kill going the way of M Faculty. Carrigan with his second kill as well. He's going to drop C9 and a third one to boot as well. That's Starrix taken down. Not sure if Starrix was on the AWP that round, but that's at least the uh, the fifth kill that uh, we've seen from Carrigan on Starrix. So, bomb will be planted on Banana. Navi have done a good job of getting the bombs down, but we've got to hold that plant after all. Zeus and sees me kills Glaive and Glaive again secures the final frag that will lead to the defusal. RDL secures the AWP as well. And that's going to be 12 9. So, after a 9 6 half, Navi yet to secure a round in this half. They've lost five on the bounce. And the chance that they might be eco here. Yeah, they will be eco as well. Uh, maybe not actually. They got 3k respawn, didn't they? So, it will be a light buy by the looks of it. In fact, not even that light, actually. We've got smokes, flashbangs. Only one HE, though. Looks like Navi spreading for the pick. Initial fire coming in. Pronax going to be dropped on top of car by Seized. But AK-47 plays Spitfire replying to Seize, but Zeus eventually gets the uh, the kill to open up Banana now. Now I'll be a little bit slow to react on this, perhaps they're leaving C9 here to try and cut the rotation. But as you can see, that rotation will be coming through CT spawn, not through mid, so... Carrigan with the art pick onto Zeus. Trying to hold it down from... Oh, what a kill! Starrix cannot be impressed about the, uh, the fact that that's probably Carrigan's sixth kill on him. And 4A4 moving forward from Glaive. Kibiken with the uh, double low with the AK-47. Glaive and Carrigan both being taken down. RDL eventually taking down Kibiken to leave it as a one-on-one. -on -one. And C9 clutches the round. First round of the, uh, the half there for Navi. 12-10 now the scoreline. So this is a chance for uh, Natas Vincia to, to put the rights wrong. We can build a little bit of momentum out of this, but as you can see, cash not an issue as of yet for uh, the Swedes. In fact, potentially that it's going to require uh, two more victories before they force a CT eco. This could even turn out to be disastrous for Navi if they lose, because that will cash screw them to uh, 1300 instead of 3k, so... C9 
is a super important round for Na'Vi. Now here we go, AK-47 headshot from Na'Vi to start off the round. That's going to be Zeus with the double. Secures the kill onto Spitfire and Pronax. Glaive with two of his own though. Dropping Zeus and seized in retaliation. Uh, flashbang going out, that's going to enable uh, Glaive to have another peek down Banana. Not going to stop Starix though. So Starix is going to call that Banana is now open. We have the quick rotation back from RDL though. RDL rotated over, he went back over towards Covered and then decided to t uh, turn tail and turn round, which as you can see has worked out in his favour. Secures one frag onto Starix, gets the counter CT flash out as well. And she going towards back side, gets the kill. RDL taken down by Kibikan. Kibikan now in a two on one, will go for the plant here. Carrigan, your last man standing. AWP. This is one of the few situations where an AWP can actually uh, be a better weapon for a retake. Not if he flashes like that, though. Carrigan with uh, some matchmaking flashes, though. Throws the round away, and that brings it back to a one round differential. 12 11 now the scoreline. The Swede's still in the lead, but. Momentum now with Na'Vi. We will see another buy here from the CTs, of course. Potential for another one after this as well. I'm saying we're going to see another buy, actually. Why is Glaive not dropping? He's got 8-6. It seems like M Faculty st settling in for a long game here if they're going to be uh, saving bank balances like that. And that would be... Let's have a look. 3-7 on Spitfire. Mm, probably was a big ask, actually, yeah. So maybe an eco was the right thing to do. Kind of figured that RDL would have more win than he did. Okay, on to apps. RDL, fortunately, didn't take a bullet to the face, though. Kibikam would have carried on spraying. That would have connected. Hinchy on to bedroom. Now, if you're looking to, uh, to get a decent footprint on apps here, it looks like they are going to do that in the form of Kibikam's push. He will take control of lower, so if they can tie this in with a mid push, they could actually get quad side quite easily here, as you can see. Only Carrigan holding it close, real. In fact, Carrigan and RDL are actually in pit, so nobody holding quad or arch, which forces Navi to burn those flashbangs just in preparation. Navi are a team that will feel that out, though. They will figure out that it's, you know, both of them in pits. So they will start to save flashbangs on the uh, arch and quad side pushes eventually. Now, Ninja in tree. Kibikan missing it again. Second time we've seen that from Faculty. You've got to check that tree this day and age. Wave on site. Gets one frag with the P250. Shut down by uh, Zeus eventually. Spitfire also shut down by Zeus. So the bomb will go down. Two on two, though. See man making sure he holds down top banana. Double frags from him. In fact, triple kill in that round, as well as two for Zeus. So, tied game again here, 12-12. I think Na'Vi, from this point forward, they can uh, they can breathe a sigh of relief. It did seem like the game was getting away from them there for a moment. Well, they're going up against a fully bought up Carrigan, though. And as you see, Carrigan actually switching up again. He's going to go banana here. We saw this uh, in the opening gun round, where he popped up on banana and then instantly fell back over towards covered side for taking the pick. Like he's going to find the pick this time, although Seize is facing at a quite an extreme angle, though. It's a little bit acute at the moment for Carrigan. If Seize does take one or two side steps, though, that will open up the frag. What it has allowed is Spitfire to get all the way down bottom banana, and he does secure that kill onto Seize, so. And they've been smart about this as well. They've left Carrigan and they've moved Glaive back, so. Really good play from the Swedes so far. Switching it up on who's covering what, dependent on spawns and dependent on what, what they think is actually going to be hitting them, so. Showing that they are very reactionary here, which is something that I like to see. I mean, a lot of teams just tend to play those default strats and, you know, rely on the aim. Um, doesn't seem that's the case here for M Faculty. We saw that way back when there was... I say way back. Not really way back, but back when they were the Lemon Dogs, they always had those, uh, you know, interesting little... Uh, I, call, I like to call them audibles, I suppose, because they're like American football audibles, where, you know, plays are just on the sly. Anyway, Carrigan with the kill onto Zeus. So, two-man advantage right now for the Swedes. C9, Starix, and Kibikan are going to push, though. C9 baiting a little bit here. It's going to allow Spitfire to find two frags. 
If we can, and Starrick's both taken down. C9 now going to fall back. Five on one. Might as well save that AK here. Oh, indeed he will. He's going to make it over towards Tiap, which is usually a good spot to save. He's only about five more seconds to survive here, so he will get that AK-47 into the next round, but not exactly a good round there for Na'Vi. Push into sight from Starix, Kibiken, and C9 was absolutely decimated. Let's take a look at your scoreboard real quick. 15-4 and 4 first place Glaive. He's been ripping it up the second half. Uh, second place is going to be Spitfire, 9-1 and 6. And third place falls to Zeus, 9-0-9. Navi slowing it right down again. They're going to waste another flash up mid. They will figure this out probably off the back of one flash, though. In fact, no, Adiel's going to be holding it down from quad side. He's moved up. Interesting reposition there. Probably should have checked the overlay after uh, that flash went off. Arrogant's still in graveyard, though. He's going to prove, uh, prove to be a nuisance. Zeus taking down Pronax. That's a little bit more space here for Zeus to maneuver, but he's in a two on one. I have to say, I don't fancy his chances, especially coming out of smoke like he is. <laughs> Well, Carrigan having none of it. Picks him off in the smoke with the AWP. That is the 14th round for the Swedes. So one more round needed for game point here. And at the very least, one point taken from this game. Don't think I'm faculty are thinking about the draw, though. They've got to be thinking about the victory here. They have the momentum. They have uh, Glaive on fire right now and Carrigan playing really well. RDL not doing too badly either. 10-1-5. and five. Surprised at Starrix, 3-1-11. and 11. That's uh, a fairly flat performance from one of the uh, better players in the Ukrainian scene. And Carrigan waiting patiently for the uh, push-up mid. Not going to uh, be able to hold that, though, because of the smoke. 4-A-1 from RDL does find its target. 7 HP remaining now and seized. Kibikin has got to get out of apps. He can't. He's going to be shut down by RDL. This is looking like it could be game point here. C9 still alive. Shut down, though, by Pronax. RDL with the kill into Cs2. That leaves just Zeus to find in library. And he's not going to land these P250 shots. Eventually takes down Carrigan, but... Probably a case of too little too late here. It's a four on one. He's going to try and get Carrigan's weapon. He will grab that AWP. In fact, they are going to come looking for him, though. He's got 42 seconds and the bomb. He knows there's got to be two uncovered sites, so he might be as well go in Banana here. He's got the time. Indeed, that's exactly what he's going to do. Pronax sort of playing that floating position between Arch, so... Ooh, this, could be, this could be actually quite slick from Zeus. If Zeus manages to get the uh, the entry kill out of Aps here, he might be able to get this bomb down, as you can see from the positioning. Glaive already going down mid. In fact, he's going to save. Yeah, he's not going to commit to this. How much money would Zeus have actually had? Let's have a look. Um, the free K respawn, he would have been able to buy whatever he wanted, so I'm not sure if that's a particularly great idea. So, game point accrued by the uh, the Swedes here. End faculty 15-12 to 12 up over Na'Vi. Many people would consider this an upset. Not myself, to be quite honest. I, I wouldn't wouldn't have said that End faculty would have won this game, but... I would have, uh, and that, that, like I said, that's just bias from 1.6 as well. Anytime I hear Navi, I automatically think wins. Um, but yeah, if you would have said that M Faculty were going to win this, say, 16 12, I'd have been like, yeah, I can believe that. Anyway, Starrix with the first kill onto Glaive. Carrigan again taking down Starrix, though. That's been the story of this game. Starrix has not been able to establish his dominance with the AWP because of Carrigan. So, 4 on 4. We're going to pull him back over towards the quad side if his position was spotted on the uh, arch side. C just had the bomb banana. Pronax with the kill onto Zeus. As you can see, that's going to force the, uh, the retreat into banana. Obviously thinking about the quick rotation. Yep, Pronax is going to start that off. C9 with the kill onto RDL. Back to a 3 on 3. Spitfire starting to rotate as well. There we go. Carrigan from pit. Oh, kill. Uh, sorry, AK kill from C9. Shuts down Pronax. Carrigan's still in pick. Can he find the kill? He does. Takes down Kibikent. He's going to be taken down by the AK, though. Sees moving through pit. Passes the plant off. 
And he's gonna be out. Oh! <clears throat> As my voice completely goes, one second. No idea where that went then. So, one on one between Spitfire and C9. Gonna be somewhat ineffectual. C9 secures the frag, keeps Navi in this game with a chance of securing a point. And that is now 15 13, so. 14th round of the second half about to start. This, my friends, is going down to the wire. Taking a peek at the scoreboard. First place still going to be Glaive. 15, 8, and 6. So, almost at a 3 to 1 KDR. He's been the deciding factor in this uh, second half. 12, 1, and 6. 2 to 1 KDR for uh, RDL. And third place, that goes to Carrigan. 11, 3, and 9. And uh, HE going up early into uh, Balcony. That means C9's probably going to be rushing here after his walk. Uh, maybe not. So, Navi no, there's absolutely no margin for error here. This is where Navi usually tend to shine, though. I mean, three fifths of the team have been, you know, in that pressure cooker situation at a world class level multiple times, so. I mean, yes, a uh, invite weekly game isn't going to particularly stress them too much, I don't think. Now, Kibber came with that opening kill, so now they're off to a good start here. They're going to look to put the 14th round on the board. And 4A1 spray coming in, but no kills. Carrigan in a position here to stop the entry. Shut down by Starix. There's a, re there's a uh, retaliatory kill from Starix. That's what we're looking to see in the second one as well. Takes down Pronax. Two coming in from RDL in quick succession with the M4A1, though. RDL's still in pit as well. He's been on fire, so don't be surprised if Zeus gets dropped here by RDL. Zeus, 180. He knows that he's in a super vulnerable position. He's got to get into pit quickly. Finds the frag, does he? Uh, Go TV lags, which leads me to believe probably RDL secured the kill here. What a time to lag out. ESCA, seriously, get some good relays. I don't know if you have to talk to Ragnum or what, but that's somewhat unacceptable. Last kill of the game. Like I say, I I think it's a GoTV bug where when you get to the last kill, if there's not enough delay on or if it's, if it's incorrectly set up, it will just bomb out like that. So I, I would say Zeus has probably been dropped here. Um, I think RDL must have got the kill. In fact, look, looking at the actual, yeah. Look at how RDL's rifle's positioned compared to Zeus's. RDL should have got that kill. Let me try and reconnect it to the server. But it is uh, it is a GoTV bug, I believe. What, what happens is, as soon as the uh, 16th round is hit, it disconnects from the server, I think. Maybe that's something the Hidden Path could look at. That was a bit of an anticlimax, though, not catching the final kill. I have to say, I'm not quite that impressed about that. Between that and the leggy uh, Go Relays, I think something needs to be done. So yeah, it does seem like maybe the Go TV's actually gone down here. No, there we go. It's going to load eventually. Yeah, that would be the end of it. So obviously, RDL did get that kill, and that means that basically, uh, in fact, they do secure the victory 16-14. to 14. So, I'm going to take a brief break here at Game Sports. It will be Universal Soldiers versus Astana Dragons coming up, hopefully in about two to three minutes, because I imagine they are pretty close to game live here. Yeah, there we go. Everybody's disconnected from the server, so that does mean that it was a uh, end faculty win. Unfortunately, didn't catch the last kill, but it's out of my control. So don't go anywhere. Keep it locked. I'm going to spin up some music, and when I come back, it will be uh, Unisol taking on the, uh, well, for my money, the best team that's, that's coming out of the CIS region at the moment, Astana Dragons. <laughs> 